welcome. This is the case that I'll be using for the computer build today. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, bigger than what you see in the picture. We have big vents on the side. We have a fan on top. We have more vents in the back. And unlike some other cases, the power source unit goes to the bottom right here. And I'll show you where everything goes in a minute. The first thing we have to do is actually open the lids. So we'll get to that. I have the case lying down. As you can see, there are knobs here and here that make me open the that allows me to open the right and the left panes. So I'll be doing that so that I can install the CD drive first. Uh, you can just pull this out. As you can see the big vents here, and that is the inside of the case. Since I'll be installing the CD drive first, I'll be putting this right side up. This is a different case, it doesn't use screwdriver screws for everything. Just put that down. Unlike other cases, this case has clips on the side here. You can open them and pull them out. This is where the CD drives will hang from. You have to go on the inside, open the same one on top here. We have something. And on the front, we have a little pane here that you can pull out back or forth so that the CD drive sticks out. There. You can hold on to this later if you want to close it up. Uh, so I'm going to go get the CD drive now. Okay, so I have the DVD burner right here. This is what it looks like from the front. And in the back you have the connectors. Here you have the power connector and here you have the SATA connector. This connects directly to the motherboard, this connects directly to the power source. Um, as you can see, we have a few wires here coming out of the case. These are the power LEDs, the power buttons, and everything. Um, you want to get these out of the way just in case, just so that they don't interfere with uh, the DVD drive. And once again, I'll do this for you. you. Remember, you can just pop it out in the front. There's no screws, there's nothing to snap. Just push it out. There, it'll fall out. Ah, it fell on the floor. You can keep that if you want to put it back in later on. And this is really simple. You just, really from the front, you just push it in. There we go. Make sure it's lined up. And <clears throat> uh, while getting this DVD drive, I realized that I need, uh, I need to take off another one of these hinges so that there's enough room. And once this is done, you line it up with the screw and you just close it. You can put the front top one back too. And there we go. And as you can see, this probably won't come out anymore. You won't need to add any extra screws, although there's a space here if you want to. And there is your DVD drive. The next component will be coming up. Uh, it has a different area to install the SATA hard drive here. It'll go in here. I'll show that to you now. Uh, once again, before I continue, I want to tell you that there is no specific order in which you should install any of these. You can do the motherboard first and then worry about these later. I'm just doing this from easy to, well, from easy to hard. Um, although they're all pretty easy. So let me get the hard drive and we will install that next. Okay, so this is the bay for the hard drives. Uh, here they already gave a little area for smaller hard drives. These are the laptop hard drives that you can put in there. Uh, you just snap it on and it snaps on. It doesn't require any screws, so that's a good thing. But however, I like giving screws. I can uh, put it in any way I want. But right now, this is a hard drive. I've shown this to you before in another video where I tested this actually. Uh, you have the power connectors on the left, you have the SATA connectors on the right. With this case, you get these little tabs that you put on the side of the hard drive. 
right here they go into the screw slots very easily on both sides as you can see it fits pretty easily so now on the case all you have to do is just slide it in and snap them into position and the hard drive won't move or come out the only reason I don't like these over the um, over the screws is because now look the connectors are on this side of this on this side of the case so that means I'm gonna have to use these holes to put the wires in I hope that it doesn't have any negative effects or anything so I'm gonna have to try that out and see and hope that it goes well and now that I've turned it around on this side you can see that there are screw spots for for you to secure the right here and here to secure the hard drive I mean the DVD drive if you need to <coughs> and we have that next thing we're going to do is install the power source unit I'll turn this right side up again this is different from other cases because the hard drive, the power source unit goes on the bottom right here on the bottom left side of the screen and it comes out outside over here. Usually they're on the top but this case is different. It has a fan on the top, the big fan on the top. It keeps things a little cooler. Uh, so I'm going to go get the power source unit and I'm going to lie that down. Okay, so I have the power source unit right here. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of wires coming out of this. These are all the connections that will be connecting to the hard drive, the SATA drive, excuse me, the DVD drive, the motherboard, the CPU, the graphics card, and basically everything else. Uh, this is the actual power source. As you can see, there's a fan on top. And since this is on the bottom, the connector in the case, I'm going to have to put this facing right side up. You can also put it uh, facing right uh, upside down. There's a hole in the bottom for the air to vent out. But I am afraid uh, it might not be as cool, it might not be as open. So I'm going to do this uh, facing right side up. I'm going to place this down here. Really gently. And that might not work. And over here, you're going to have to screw it in right here. There are four screws. I actually have to put this upside down. It didn't look like it was working properly right side up. So I guess the fan will be venting from the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to screw this in. There are, uh, the case should provide you with screws. I have maybe three dozen of them in this little bag that came with the case. And I take out four of them. I'm going to screw this into place. Okay, I skipped through the screwing because it's not the most exciting part of the build. Once you have all four screws in the back right here, it's stable, you can try to move it, it's not going to move. Um, the next thing we're going to do is actually install the motherboard. For that, make sure you have these wires <coughs> excuse me, out of the way so that they don't interfere with anything. It comes with a little strap, uh, it's fine. This is a fan, this is for the fan. And excuse me while I go get the motherboard. The motherboard will be placed in the middle area here. You won't have this opening over here because I'll be putting in the left panel or the right panel uh, depending on whichever you want to see it. But this is the motherboard that I have. It's an ATX motherboard. You have the CPU slot here in the middle. You have you have four RAM slots. It's a little different here. You have um, the IDE drives, IDE slots on the on the side actually. Same with the SATA, SATA slots. You have two on top. You have a few PCIe connections, PCI connections, and of course on this side you have all the USB, the sound, everything else. Uh, as you can see, there's no graphics card installed inside the motherboard. That's why I have to get an external one, and I'll be using that as well. But before I install the motherboard, I have to install something in the case first. It's this. So this is the panel out of the case. As you can see, there are little tabs here that they will interfere with everything, so I would recommend that you just bend it the opposite way so that they're out of the way. And once that's done, you can put it on the side over here. There's a little hole here. I'll show you where that goes as soon as this is done. Uh, this isn't absolutely necessary. 
but I would recommend it because without this there would be a lot of empty space or open space um, for dust and maybe even air to get in to the hard drive I mean excuse me to the inside of the computer and affect the motherboard which may not be as good once that we have this done you can cut off the tabs in the back it doesn't matter at this point uh, the only thing you have to do is just push it in there a little bit stick and once the motherboard is fully installed it'll keep pushing on it providing pressure so that it doesn't come out you can see this it looks like this I know it's a little off color but what are you gonna do it's not the most important part of the computer uh, you'll barely look at it since it's on the back that's done make sure everything is settled and you're ready to place your motherboard inside uh, before I actually install the motherboard I'm gonna be putting these these little screw thingies inside inside the computer case for it to act as some kind of a shock absorber for the motherboard so that even if static electricity touches this part of the case it won't touch the motherboard because of these uh, you can fit them you can find where the motherboard has the holes you can put them in there screw them in, you can do this with your hand, it really doesn't matter. Uh, here in the break I measured where all the where they'll fit. These come with the case once again. A lot of these things come with the case. Once you have that in there you can set the motherboard on them. Make sure the parts get out of these the slots properly and you can start screwing it in. And that's coming up next. Now I'm going to place the motherboard in properly. I'm going to align them with the little screw holes and make sure that this goes through the tabs properly. Let's do this. Watch it on the left side, make sure they go through the tabs. You want to be careful with it because you don't want to break this. You don't want to break anything and you should have it. Next thing you should do is just screw everything in. I'm going to do the bottom left one here first because it's easiest for me. Don't try to do it too tight, it won't come out very easily. If you do it too tight, you might crack the motherboard, and that's something you don't want to do. There are little bumps around the screw area on the motherboard to prevent, to actually have extra protection from static. As you can see, it's stable. It's not going to move anywhere. And there is your motherboard installation. It's pretty simple. Uh, the next thing I will do is install the CPU. I know that's something you guys want to see. It's pretty simple and it's and it goes in right in the middle over here. So please wait while I get the CPU.